Okay, Particle Filter. Now we begin from where we started uh, defining Kalman filter. So here we have three time instances. At this point, we the robot the, the robot's location is XK. Since we don't have access to this XK, let me just draw it a little bigger. So at this point, this, this is the, 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 the position of the robot is described as a random variable because we have no access to, to it. The best estimation for that is k minus 1. Now, if we have the best estimation at k minus 1, whatever prediction we make of the robot's position at time, uh, at time k should take into account this best estimation. This is the first uh, assumption in particle filter. Okay? The estimation for K should involve the best estimation for K minus 1. So in our derivation, whenever you see this condition fulfilled, say stop. Because it has to include, it's logical, right? If we have the best estimation for K minus 1, and if we say that the, the process is autocorrelated, it's correlated with itself, that means knowledge of the past somehow helps us to determine the knowledge of the present, and knowledge of the present should help us to determine the, the position of the robot at k plus 1, then our equation should reflect this, this belief. The second one is the following. The second one is because the process is autocorrelated, the position the robot has at K is a transition from the position it has at K minus 1. It should be a transition. There should be a transition in state, or in other words, the position of K depends on the position of K minus 1. Right? If, for example, the, the, the robot moves with a constant uh, velocity containing some, some error, this velocity somehow limits it to the position it should achieve at k because it begins from the position of k minus 1. So it says we can uh, take uh, knowledge of transition probability to determine the position of the robot at k based on its position at k minus 1. So the, 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 the best estimation of k should be expressed as a transition from the position of k minus 1. So this is the, 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 uh, another fundamental uh, property of a particle filter. The position the robot will have at k 
is conditioned by its position at k minus one. So the, the the robot may ha attain different positions with different probabilities given its position at k minus one. Okay, so that means if, for example, this axis is x, okay, the robot may turn it to different positions with different probabilities. So we have to take into account probability of xk given xk minus 1. Okay, this is very, very important. Here, the, the, the position should also take x hat of k minus 1. The third is similar to Kalman because when the time arrives, here we have to make measurement. So it is here x m of k. So third It has to involve the measurement taken at time given. So particle filter tries to accommodate to these three sources of evidence. The best estimation we have at k minus one. The transition from k minus 1 to k and the measurement taken at k. So, this is the conceptual uh, foundation or basis for defining the mathematical formulation for Kalman filter. Okay, so let's talk about is everything okay so far? So mathematical derivations. Suppose we begin like this. The, the positions the robot assume are time one, two, k minus one, k K plus one. The position, the position, the different positions the robot assumes at this time instances, we express them as x x k. And the probability that we observe this in this constellation. In this in this sequence is described by the joint probability density x k x k minus one x one x two. This is the, 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 the joint sorry x k x k minus one x one x two. Okay, this is the probability of observing the robot. Assuming these positions while it moves along the, the trajectory. Now, at each time instance, we also make measurements. Okay? At each time instance, we take measurements. And we depict this measurement as y or d. Okay? dk refers to the measurements we have. Okay, this is a collective name D, it has K elements. Okay, D refers to measurement. Okay, and this one is the state, the hidden state, which we do not know, but about which we wish to make uh, estimation. Okay, the hidden position. Are the hidden positions about which we have to uh, uh, reason, uh, make reason. An interesting aspect here 
just a while ago, I have to uh, find a joint probability. We can describe this like this. Probability of x1, xk, we can describe as the probability of xk given xk or dk minus 1. xk, xk minus 1. X1, X, X1 times probability of Xk minus 1, X1. Okay, then we just discussed uh, the joint probability density function can be described as a conditional probability. Now look, the conditional probability Xk given all the, the, the positions using the Markov expression can be described. This can be simplified. You see this one? This can be simplified as simply xk given xk minus 1. Okay, this part. Similarly now we can describe this in terms of conditional probability. How can we do that? So now here Probability of x1 to xk is described as the probability of xk given xk minus 1 because of the, the Markov assumption that I don't care how the system arrives at k minus 1, I just need the system at k minus 1, the system stay at k minus 1 to estimate or determine the, its position at now, the, the same thing here can be expressed as probability of xk minus 1 given xk minus 2 x1. But xk minus 1 depends only on xk minus 2 and not on all the previous ones. So, we can also shorten this one as probability of xk minus 1 given xk minus 2. This also is times probability of xk minus 2 x1. Again, we, have, we can uh, uh, conditionally describe this one up to the last. In general, this joint probability function can be described as the summation of, because here you see it's summation, this is summation, this is summation, and the summation i mean from 1 up to k. Probability of xk, sorry, xi given xi minus 1. So if this is another important formulation we need for uh, particle filter. Okay, is so far everything fine? Now let's go to the, the uh, the derivation. Given all the evidence we have up to time k, the, the, the position of the uh, robot, the, the, the position the robot takes, okay, the, the position the robot takes, this one, Let's describe this one as 0 to k, x0 to k, uh, because the robot always begins from an initial uh, uh, position. So here we have to include x0. To reason about these positions, we can use Bayes' theorem as follows. So the probability. The probability that x, the position takes all the, 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 the positions, the robot takes all these positions. The probability, sorry, the probability that the robot takes all these positions, given all the evidence we have. Okay? dk is the, the evidence we have here. We have taken measurement at time 1, at time 2. 
and I find k. The measurement is taken not at uh, y naught, but at y one, because x naught is the initial position of the robot, which is known in a probabilistic sense. But the measurement begins at y one. Okay. So this one we depict as x hat of k. This is our best knowledge. This is our best knowledge about the positions the robot has taken up to time k. Okay, our best knowledge. the positions the robot up to k. So we can describe it like this. Given all the evidence we have up to k. So using uh, base theorem, this can be described as forms of dk given x 0 to k times probability of x0 to k. Right? Divided by probability of dk. We just use Bayes' theorem. This, ah, the, the measurement for example, This is the measure. The measurement we take, I have said this before, I will repeat it again. The measurement we take to estimate the position of the robot has something to do with the actual position at time k, but it contains some error, which is why we describe it as a probability. So the measurement we take at time k reflects the position of the robot at time k. contains some error. We don't, however, make any assumption about the distribution of this error in particle filter. Okay, we don't say, for example, it is normally distributed, we don't care. Particle filter accommodates everything. But this is very important. The, the measurement we take to, to measure the distance of the robot from a target reflects its actual position. So for example, if I have if I have the probability of yk given the k minus 1, the, 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 the measurement we take at k minus 1, uh, at k, has nothing to do with the measurement taken previously because the, the previous measurements reflect the, the position of the robot at, at the previous time. So this one is just probability of yk. Likewise, for example, yk given xk and xk minus 1, if I have this one, the, the, the measure, this one, the measurement I take at time k, has nothing to do with the previous position of the robot. So in this case, this is probability of yk given xk. It's conditionally independent of xk minus 1. This has to, to be known from, from the very outset. Okay, so far this is clear, right? This is the main expression of a Bayesian uh, 
uh, estimation, but we can now simplify this based on those seven steps we introduced uh, at the beginning of our uh, lecture today. Okay, so remember, our main goal is now, once we have this, we want to find these three in this, in this uh, compound expression. In this compound expression, my, my main aim of the subsequent steps is to clearly distill these three different steps. First is my estimation should be based on the best estimation I have up to k minus 1. I have to take advantage of the transition probability and I have to take measurement. So can I extract measurement from here? Can I extract transition probabilities from here? Can I extract the best estimation for time k minus 1? The answer is yes and this is how I will that question. DK, you see, I can describe this as DK is simply a joint, a joint observation here. You see that? This is the joint observation. So I can now distribute DK as YK DK minus 1. I can describe it like this. Given x0 to k, and this is also a joint distribution here, you see, a joint distribution. I can describe it like this, transformability of xk and x0 to k minus 1. So implicitly you see that this is for the present and this is for the past. So the past the best estimation of the k minus 1 now, I am trying to make ready for my calculation. And this one now, I can express this as probability of yk and dk minus 1. This is possible. I'm preparing to, to extract these three important pieces of Okay, now this one, a joint probability density, remember, can be described as uh, in terms of conditional probability. So, this, so I begin from this one. So, probability of x0 to k given all the evidence I have up to time k is described now probability of yk given dk minus 1 and x0 to k times 
probability of g k minus 1 given x 0 to k. So I just distributed uh, this term. And I can distribute also this using conditional probability times probability of x k given x 0 to k minus 1 times probability of x 0 to k minus 1 divided by, again I use conditional probability to describe this one, probability of y k given the k minus 1 times probability of d k minus Now look, this one, this is the measurement I take at time k. It has only something to do with xk. It's not dependent on this, we have already proved here. It's not dependent on all the, the values from 0 to k minus 1, we have already said here. Okay, these two we have already set in place. So this term can be described as the probability of yk given only xk. This is the measurement we have at time k. This term is dependent, the, the measurement I have up to time k minus 1 depends on only the state up to k minus 1. So this k is fictitious. Because I cannot measure when the robot has not arrived at time k. I am at k, k minus 1, so I cannot determine about the, 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 the position of the robot when it's not there yet. So this one, probability of d k minus 1 given x 0 to k minus 1, I simplify this. And this one, you see, the, the, the state, the current state depends only on the last state and not on the, the chain of states. So here I say probability of xk given xk minus 1. This one I have to use as it is. So this is the probability of x 0 up to k minus 1. Here now I have probability of y k uh, y k this has nothing to do uh, with one another but uh, y k d k minus 1 so this is y k and this is probability of let me just pull it out it is So this is probability of yk given dk minus 1 and probability of dk minus 1. Now look. You see this one? This one and this one what is this one? Probability of d k minus 1 given x 0 to k minus 1 times probability of x 0 to k minus 1 divided by probability of d k minus 1. This is the best estimation we have for k minus 1. This we can express probability of x0 to k minus 1 given dk minus 1. The analogy is the same. You see here, this one, dk minus 1, k minus 1. Uh, this is x0 to k, x0 to k minus 1, denominator decay, 
k minus 1. So this is the best estimation we have for k minus 1. So the best estimation for up to k minus 1 for up to k minus 1. So now what remains is this one. This is measurement. Measurement. The measurement we take given the robot is in this state. This is transition. This is a transition. And this one is a normalizing factor. We don't care about this one, okay? From now on, I'm going to drop this one. It's just probability of yk, but I'm not interested in, in this one. We will forget it. So now let's put together. This is the best estimation for k. Now the three conditions are fulfilled. We have the measurement, we have the transition, and we have the best estimation for k minus 1. So probability of x up to 0 to k given the measurement up to k is described as the best estimation we have probability of x 0 to k given dk minus 1 okay 0 to k minus 1 given dk minus 1 times the probability of xk given xk minus 1 times probability of yk given xk okay we just drop the, the normalization. I'm not concerned with this. This is the most important expression of the particle physics. Okay? Particle filter involves the best estimation I have up to time k minus 1. The transition from state k to k minus 1. And so, sorry, state k minus 1 to k. And the measurement I take from uh, at time k, given the robot is in the state x k. So we have derived the most important expression of particle filter. Well, this is not really particle filter. Strictly speaking, this is base uh, Bayesian estimation. But the assumption, the three assumptions, uh, belongs to the uh, particle filter formulation. Are we alright or shall we con uh, take a rest? We, we continue. Or shall we take a rest? We continue. We can take a rest. Okay. Yeah.